Michael, bus two captain, are you here? Michael, bus two captain, if you're here, please come see me. Bond, who told you he wanted to go to Grand Safar and join the IF. 
I mean, we always knew that his heart was with Israel, and he just always wanted to do something meaningful before he, you know, went to college like his other friends. So we didn't. This wasn't really a big surprise to us that he wanted to do something for his country and for his family. And as a family, he always puts us first, and he values us so much, and he just appreciates and loves around him, and it's inspirational. None of us can imagine what last month has been for you. Please share with us how you know. Honestly, I've learned how to be patient. You know, waking up every morning and not knowing what's going on with my brother really teaches you a lesson of learning how to stay in tune with yourself and listen to what you need and be able to go around and ask for help. Like, you shouldn't be scared. You should be okay with not being okay. And I learned how specifically to be extremely patient, and it's been paying off. What would you tell him if you could send him a message right now? I mean, of course, as you may know, I will tell him that we love him, and we love you, and we just really need you to come back, and I know this reunion is going to be insane. Like, talking about this whole experience is just going to be... So, it's gonna give me closure, me and the whole family, and yeah. As we look out and see so many people gather here today, what would you like to say to everyone? I would just say thank you so much for coming here and supporting this campaign. And we just need to bring Idan and all of the other hostages home now. Bring them home! Bring them home! Bring them home! Yeah, love that you're getting this. <laughs> 
Thanks, bro. You too.
immigrant to this country that I love and call my own, ready to join with anybody who has tasted the opposite of freedom and breathe new life into our great American dream. This thank you, thank you for coming. Today, our thoughts are with the victims and survivors of October 7th. With the innocent Israeli and Palestinians suffering because of Hamas's terror, and with the families with empty seats at the dinner table. Today, our thoughts are with the brave soldiers of Israel's defense forces as they defend the state of Israel and the Jewish people. We, we thank the lone soldiers serving with such courage and to all the families who must display courage every day. We also thank the first responders who have shown such incredible heroism. One of them is here with us today, Yossi Landau, Commander Zakai South. Today, our thoughts are with all the Jews around the world who have been the victims of anti-Semitic hate and violence. Most of all, today, our thoughts are with the Israeli people as they seek peace and security. I now have the tremendous honor of introducing our cherished friend and our collective hero. We know him, we trust him, we admire him, and we are filled with gratitude for his strong leadership. Friends, joining us live from the eternal capital of the state of Israel, Jerusalem, please welcome the president of Israel, Shalom friends, sisters and brothers, Achyotai Vechai. I am speaking to you from the single most sacred site in the Jewish world, the Kotel, the Western Wall in Jerusalem. The Kotel that reminds us that Am Israel, we, the people of Israel, are eternal and no one will break us. From the Jewish symbol of fulfillment of our ancient dreams to the American symbol of freedom, liberty, and democracy. Thank you. Thank you to hundreds of thousands who gather from all over the United States, all people of goodwill, friends from different communities, faiths and denominations who have gathered today for this massive show of solidarity. In the state of Israel's darkest moment, you stood up and declared to humanity, I am here, we are here. There is no greater and more just cause than this. We come together as a family, one big mishpacha, to the march for Israel. To march for the babies, the boys and girls, women and men, viciously held hostage by Hamas. To march for the right of every Jew to live proudly and safely in America, in Israel, and all around the world. Above all, we come together to march for good, for the evil, for the good, 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 Israel. 
Let us cry out together, never again. The Hamas savagery and crimes against humanity bring to my mind, as President Biden has said, the worst ravages of ISIS. We, the people of Israel, are grateful to President Biden, his administration. I'm I work in Arizona. Dolly Dayton Drosh is our work in Erla Tzedek. She's a well known educator. The moral morality of activism and activism. Is that why IAC is always in Arizona? Oh, IAC is not because of me, but they're there. Oh, wow. How are you doing? Good. Did you get in today? Huh? Yeah. Are you doing alright? Yeah. Okay. okay. Since October 7th, Israeli society, the Jewish people, through the Catholic Revolution, we have to be
hold up? Can you hold up that part one more time? Uh, sure. The, Which part? The, the uh, words. The, the words, right? Yeah. And do you want uh, me facing that way? Or no, you're just, good, man. Just do whatever you. Just do what you're doing. Thanks a lot.
Talk to me real quick from YouTube. Uh, sure. All right, so my name's Danny. Danny. I got a small channel called At DMV Films. Okay. I see it says Christian stands with Israel. Yes. Are you a Christian by chance? Can I ask you a question? Why do you think? Why do you think that that Christians should stand with Israel? Why? Why? Well, first of all, um, they're God's people. We're all God's people, and it's the right thing to do. And God says, whoever blesses Israel will be blessed. So it's a commandment. Um, it's not right what's happening. It's lives no matter what, and it's just not right what's happening. So everybody should be standing with Israel. And what do you think to other people that say, you know, Israel is, you know, heaven forbid, they're, you know, killing babies or something, killing old people, bombing hospitals? What would you say to them? I would say try to find the truth. I would say don't don't trust everything you see on social media. Um, check your sources and look for the truth because that's actually not accurate. And um, Israel is doing everything they can. There's hospitals that are treating everybody, not just the Jews. And you know, look at look at what they're doing. Um, try to try to check your sources. Make sure that before you post anything or say anything, make sure that you know that it's the truth. Are you are you local or did you come from far away to we come here? We came from Chicago. You came from Chicago. Yeah, bus ride of us. So hours. like that's a that's a commitment, right? Yeah. Because it's what a, it's like a 13 hour drive. Like I'm that. actually from Chicago too. Okay. So you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a 13 hour drive. Sure. So just one just one more thing, you know, why invest that much of your time? That's at least you know 30 hours or more of your yeah. time. Why do you feel like it's so important to come out here today? Because it's important to stand up for what's right. And, um, you know, what's a bus ride, you know, compared to speaking out what's right and showing the world that we stand with them, we stand with the Jewish people, we love the Jewish people, we support the Jewish people, um, and just being able to be heard and, and to say that and to stand with them. So it's just important to be here and to show them that we love them very much. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. It's Thank YouTube you. at DMV Films. Okay. If you uh, happen to check it out. Okay. Take Thank care. You. Be safe. Hey, what's going on? Good, how are you? Hey, I'm, I'm from a small YouTube channel. Did you want to talk to me real quick? Sure, whatever. All right, so my name's Danny. Real quick, just tell me real quick, are you a Christian, by the way? I am. Why did you feel it's important to come out here today? Because uh, Jewish people gave us the scriptures. They gave us our Savior, Jesus Christ, and I wanted to stand with them and support them. The scriptures tell us to bless those that are in Jerusalem and pray for the peace of Israel and Jerusalem, and so that's what we're here to do. 85 years ago on Thursday was Kristallnacht, and nobody stood up for Israel. And so I'm doing that today with our group. So. And, and real quick, what do you say to the detractors that make all these accusations? They say, you know, Israel's bombing hospitals, they're causing a genocide, they say they're targeting civilians. What would, what would you say to that? I would say to that that that's not Israel, that's Hamas. And as long as Hamas uses those places, then that's what's going to happen. But no one begrudged America when we bombed Europe. And we bombed cities. We bombed uh, Tokyo, we, uh, Hiroshima. Nobody said anything. Nobody said anything when Winston Churchill bombed all the German cities. Right? We hate that. I don't want any innocent people to die. But that's not Israel doing it. That's Hamas doing it. Anything else you want to share real quick? Just pray for the peace of Israel. Thanks a lot. We love the Israeli people. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. At DMV Films, you too.
Jody Ernst. Thank you, everybody. We are here united, Democrat and Republican, House and Senate, to say we stand with Israel. behind the tree, cut down the tree so you can shoot him. That is the evil of Hamas. Never, never, never will we forget the evil of Hamas. Some of whose families are here. I hear there are parents here whose little three-year-old girl was kidnapped by the evil Hamas. When I went to Israel a few weeks ago, right after the 7th, I met with the families of those being held, with three senators, six, five senators, Democrat and Republican. I heard of parents whose little babies were taken. I heard of brothers whose sisters were killed. I heard horrible stories about the brutality of Hamas and the five of us, Democratic and Republican senators, wept and cried for a whole hour. The sadness was so great, the evil so horrible. We will continue fighting for the release of all hostages till they return. of 
of October 7th reminded me of what happened to my ancestors in Western Ukraine when the Nazis invaded. So the minute I heard of what happened in January 7th, I knew I had to go to Israel. As the first ranking Jewish Senate Majority Leader, in fact, the highest ranking Jewish elected official in American history, I not only had a desire to go to Israel, I felt a special obligation to go. When I got off the plane, Israel was still shaken from what happened. I said to the Israeli people, Israel, we in America have your back. America feels your pain. We ache with you. We stand with you. And we will not rest until you get all the assistance you need. Until you get the assistance you need. Woo! My friends, in conclusion, Hamas's goal was to scare us. Then those perpetrating the poison of, of anti-Semitism and bigotry around the world are trying to scare us. But we will not allow history to slide back to the days of the Holocaust when Jews were targeted and murdered and butchered. Instead, the Jewish people will re be resilient. And today, all of you are here showing we will not hide in the face of adversity in America and in Israel. I'm that could so easily bring together leaders of both parties and both chambers. But the survival of the state of Israel and her people unites us together, and it unites all Americans, all Americans. Let me be very clear. The United States stands unequivocally with our neighbor, our friend, our ally, Israel. They are, they are neighbors in a global sense, that's right. Last week, a bipartisan group of members stood in solidarity on the steps of the House to mourn the lost lives in the October 7th attack and agree with the families of Israeli hostages that are still being held in Gaza. We heard heartbreaking and tragic accounts of their kidnapping. And of course, as you know, many of those families haven't received an update of their well-being. As a parent myself, I can begin to comprehend their despair. All of us feel that way. This morning, we watched the horrific film that was produced by Hamas for their own cameras as they committed the assault. It's unspeakable. The auditorium was full of Republicans and Democrats in the House, and they wept as we watched the film together. Most couldn't sit through it. These Israeli hostages were kidnapped in their homes by barbaric Hamas terrorists for simply being Jewish and living in Israel. As Prime Minister Netanyahu says so well, this is a fight between good and evil between light and darkness, between civilization and barbarism. barbarism. The calls for a ceasefire are outrageous. No ceasefire! No ceasefire! No ceasefire! No ceasefire! No ceasefire! assault on Jewish lives since the Holocaust, and there are hundreds of hostages, many of them Americans, still stuck inside Gaza. Israel will cease their counteroffensive when Hamas ceases to be a threat to the Jewish state. Yeah!
But Hamas's genocidal and anti-Semitic rhetoric isn't just confined to Gaza, as you know. The war in Israel has awakened an alarming amount of anti-Semitism towards Jewish people here in the United States and across the globe. In the halls of Congress, the college campuses, this rise of anti-Semitism must be stopped. We've heard many echo the Hamas rallying cry from the river to the sea, and I'm convinced that a lot of these college students that are engaging in these protests do not understand that is an explicit call for the extermination of Israel. It is happening daily in our country, as you know, and it is unacceptable for Jewish Americans to feel unsafe at home. It is unacceptable for Jewish businesses to face violence, vandalism, and threats. It is unacceptable for universities to allow Hamas apologists to assault and accost Jewish students on campus. It is unacceptable for any political leader in this nation to give credence to this dangerous rhetoric. We can and we must do more to stand with our great ally and friend. And it is my hope that this gathering today serves as a reminder to the entire world, but also to those within our own borders, that the United States stands proudly with Israel and the Jewish people forever. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of this. God bless you. Leader Schumer, Speaker Johnson, Senator Hurst, all those assembled, shalom. What an honor and a blessing to stand with you in solidarity during this very difficult moment for the Jewish people and for Israel. Hamas brutally attacked Israel on October 7th because Hamas wants to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. So let me be clear, we will never let that happen. Congress will continue to support in a bipartisan way the state of Israel and Israel's unequivocal right to exist as a Jewish and democratic state President Joe Biden has strongly supported the state of Israel. And I strongly support President Biden's supplemental funding request for Israel, for Ukraine. We must also decisively address the cancer of anti-Semitism with the fierce urgency of now of us is an attack on all of us and we are going to do everything possible to stop the anti-semitic attacks against our jewish brothers and sisters the united states and israel have a special relationship our commitment to israel's security is ironclad and let me be clear Israel has an absolute right to defend itself against Hamas. There's a question on the minds of many of us. Where do we go from here? We must stand with Israel in its effort to decisively defeat Hamas and make sure that this brutal terrorist regime can never rise again. We must make sure that every single hostage is returned home safely. And then we must stand together to secure a just and lasting peace between Israel and the Palestinian people. The special relationship between the United States and Israel is, yes, rooted in our shared values and our shared strategic interests. But the moral case for Israel is anchored in the painful history of the Jewish people. 
For centuries, Jews have been persecuted, brutalized by anti-Semitism, and violently thrown out of country after country. The Jewish people were violently expelled from Jerusalem by the Roman Empire. The Jewish people were violently expelled from Alexandria. The Jewish people were violently expelled from France. The Jewish people were violently expelled from England. The Jewish people were violently expelled from Spain. The Jewish people were violently expelled from Switzerland. The Jewish people were violently expelled from Portugal. The Jewish people were violently expelled from countries all throughout Europe. The Jewish people were violently expelled from the Middle East. The Jewish people were systematically murdered by the Nazi regime. The Jewish people were violently attacked by Hamas on October 7th, resulting in the largest loss of Jewish life in a single day since the Holocaust. So we are here, more than 100,000 people strong, to unequivocally declare, never again. Never again. The state of Israel must always exist as a safe haven for the Jewish people. And so we stand together with the Jewish community in Israel. We stand together with the Jewish community in America. We stand together with the Jewish community all throughout the world. We stand together in the effort to crush anti-Semitism. We stand together in the effort to crush anti-Jewish hate. We stand together in the effort to bring home the hostages. We stand together in the effort to make sure that America will always be a safe space for the Jewish community. In every United States of America, do you stand with Israel? <laughs> Folks, I am here today as a longtime friend and staunch supporter of our greatest partner in the Middle East, Israel. In December 2014, before I was even sworn in to the United States Senate, I visited Kibbutz Niraz in southern Israel by the Gaza border. One of the kibbutzim that was hit the hardest by Hamas on October 7th. Israel and her people hold a very special place in my heart. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here to show your unwavering support for our Jewish brothers and sisters. What Iran backed Hamas perpetrated on October 7th was pure evil, and those monsters deserve nothing short of complete and total destruction. Three days after the heinous terror attacks, I was on the ground in Israel, meeting with American and Israeli families, and sitting across the table from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, as well as opposition leader Lapid. We heard, we heard from a father who rushed over from the funeral of his son's 18-year-old best friend, who had just been brutally murdered at the hands of Hamas. We spoke with the family of an 80-year-old father of five, a peace activist who drove Palestinian children to doctor's appointments, who was kidnapped from his home during the invasion. With tears in their eyes, his family recounted the inhumanity of the attack the destruction of their home, and ultimately the death of their brother while he was valiantly defending their home and family. In every meeting, the message was abundantly clear. 
Do not let the United States cower when the world starts to. Stand steadfastly in your solidarity. So we are here today as Republicans and as Democrats to assure you we will not shrink back and shudder in fear. No. No. We will not shudder in fear as too many around the world already have. We will not sit quiet. as anti-Semitism is being promulgated in classrooms and campuses around the country. The brutal reality of Hamas cannot be diminished. They murder babies. They rape women. They abuse the elderly. They killed 30 of our fellow Americans, hundreds of our Israeli friends, and are currently, right now, holding 200 innocent men, women, and children hostage. How anyone in America could sympathize with these terrorists is truly unfathomable. All right. Friends, there should not be a shred of anti-Semitism in our country. Not only today, but in the coming weeks and months, as Israel fights to secure their most basic human right, the right to life, the United States must remain resolute. We will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder with all of you, our Jewish friends in Israel, the United yes. States, and around the world. May God be with those who have lost a loved one, those who are waiting on the phone for an update about a son or daughter, those who are facing unprecedented harassment and hostility, and those whose family members bravely serving in the Middle East. And may God bless Israel. God bless Israel. As she rightly defends herself against Hamas's brutal attacks, Israel, the United States, will always have your back.
צהריים טובים, קהל יקר ואהוב. הלב שלי! אנחנו ממש מרגישים זכות להיות כאן היום איתכם. זו הזדמנות גם לומר תודה לתמיכה הגדולה של ארצות הברית שמאפשרים את המעמד האדיר הזה. לא מובן מאליו. היום זה ראש חודש כסלו. ובראש חודש כסלו אנחנו יודעים שזה החודש שבו האור גבר על החושך. ועכשיו אני רואה מול העיניים שלי אור אין סוף. יש פה מלא אור, והוא ודאי ודאי יגבר על החושך הזה. שחווינו בשבת הקשה הזאת. אבל מאז התגלה בעם שלנו, בתוך הכאב, בתוך השבר. התגלו עוצמות אדירות של אהבה, של נתינה, של חסד, של עין טובה. כל הפילוג שהיה... נעלם והפכנו להיות לב אחד. והיום, והיום אנחנו כאן במעמד עם מאות אלפי יהודים ותומכי ישראל ואוהבי ישראל. מעמד היסטורי, אז אני רוצה לנצל את הבמה הזאת איתכם ולומר את חלק פעילים שכתב דוד אמנה ככה בכוונה גדולה שיהיה לי זכות עם ישראל, שיהיה לי זכות חיילי צה"ל, שיהיה לי זכות הילדים, הילדות והמשפחות שנמצאות שם בשבי שיחזרו בריאים בגופם ובנפשם ושיהיה לי זכות הביחד הזה, כמו שכתוב, שהיה במעמד הר סיני, שזה לדעתי הכי קרוב למעמד הר סיני בקרות, שנזכו להיות כאיש אחד בלב אחד לנצח. אז נגיד פסוק ואתם תחזרו אחריי. שיר המעלות אשא עיניי אל הרים, ואין יבוא עזרי. עזרי מעם אדוני, עושה שמיים וארץ. השמש לא יכה כאברך בלילה אדוני ישמרך מכל רע ישמור את נפשך אדוני ישמור צאתך ובואך מעתה ועד עולם
deafening silence. We see clearly now. We see naked, virulent Jew hatred being disguised as a noble call for liberation. And we reject it. What does Israel's defense in response to a terrorist attack have to do with an elderly Jewish man in California killed for holding an Israeli flag? This is terrorism, but we will win. We always have. We are strong, resilient, and devoted, and we will not lose ourselves. We will worry for our global Jewish family and also hurt for the innocent Palestinians used as human shields by Hamas. We will work to eviscerate Hamas and also pray for a free and flourishing Gaza. We will remember and work for the release of the 240 hostages as well as for the safety of the 2.2 million Gazans also held hostage by Hamas. We will pray for the of the IDF in a war Israel did not start and did not want, but a war Israel will win. Because we must. Those who hate us deny our humanity and our No cease fire! 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 No. We stand, we stand united, proud, resolute, with absolute moral certitude in our light, like our ancestors who for 3,000 years looked hate straight in the eyes. We too will prevail. We will care, take care of each other. We will take care of our brothers and sisters in Israel. We will fight and we will love ferociously. Our light will shine until the darkness is defeated.
until these families are made whole. We have a of them here with us today. In solidarity with them, I'd like to ask you to hold up your placards, their faces, for a moment of silence. Thank you. I now have the honor of introducing three family members of hostages. Orna Nutra, Alana Zaitschik, and Rachel Goldberg. May their courage and strength inspire us all. And I am Omer's mom. Omer. Can you put the sign down? They can't see the video. Born one month after 9-11. Celebrated his 22nd birthday only a few weeks ago, captive by Hamas. Omer is a warm, optimistic, and people-loving person. Everywhere he goes, he immediately makes new friends. He is this big guy, six foot two, always with a smile on his face. In some ways, Omer grew up like any other kid on Long Island. He is truly a member of this wonderful Jewish community. He's crazy about sports, any sports, but he especially loves basketball. He was always a leader, whether the captain of this high school, the Schechter School of Long Island, or the regional president of his youth group, USY. He's also a dual citizen of both the United States and Israel and was raised with a love and a passion for both of his homelands. So naturally, after graduating high school, he decided to take a gap year in Israel to connect with his roots. And the closer he grew to his new Israeli friends, the more he reflected on his own identity. As a descendant of Holocaust survivors on both sides, he understood the importance of a strong Israel. So, being the person that he is, he made the decision to join his new friends and serve in the IDF and protect the country. He was drafted as a lone soldier in the Armor Corps he was protecting people when he was taken by Hamas. And since then, our lives have turned upside down. From a place of deep pain, we hold strong for you, Omer. We speak in your name tirelessly. We hope and pray and we act. And I must believe that our prayers and actions have power. Omer, you're not just my beloved son. You touch so many in deep and profound ways.
power in speaking Omer's name, posting his picture, and keeping his story in the public eye, calling your representatives every single day. There is power in showing him the same love and compassion he has spent his young life showing everyone he meets. We all must use the power that we have to help bring Omer and all of the hostages home now! My name is Alana Zajcik, and I'm here to tell you about love. On October 7th, my cousin, Shavon, her husband, David, their three-year-old twins, Emma and Yuli, my cousin, Danielle, her five-year-old daughter, Amelia, all six of them were brutally kidnapped from Kibbutz Nir Oz. While the kibbutz was ravaged by Hamas, they hid in their bomb shelter for hours until it filled with smoke and they could not hide any longer. At which point, Sharon sent a haunting voice note to her family group chat. We're not going to make it out of this. We love you. The pain I have experienced since they were taken has been so sharp, it follows my every breath. I wake up each morning to remember this truth. My family is being held hostage by terrorists. I am here with you because I love my family and I promised I would scream to the ends of the earth for them. This unwavering love of family is the heart of what it means to be Jewish and it is more importantly the heart of what it means to be human. But for too many in the West, the suffering of hostage families like mine has become a footnote. Collateral damage in service of some perceived higher universal truth. For too many, it feels like to care about one family, to love one child, is to diminish the suffering of another. But the simple human truth is that you don't have to choose. You can abhor the suffering of Palestinian families and the suffering of Israeli families like mine. You can You can call for peace and the immediate return of the innocent men, women, and children who are violently taken from us. It doesn't need to be political to share in my grief or in the anguish that the Israeli people are feeling. To demand the release of the hostages is not an act of politics, nor is it a cry for war. It is an act of love and a cry for humanity. And love is the only thing that can repair our shattered hearts and bring us back together in the name of peace. Thank you. is Rachel, and I am the mother of Hirsch Goldberg Poland, a wounded civilian American Israeli kidnapped from the music festival on October 7th. Right now, me, we, how we are living is hard to describe to you. We hostage families have lived the last 39 days in slow motion torment. For 38 nights, none of us have slept the real sleep of the before. We all have third degree burns on our souls. Our hearts are bruised and seeping with misery. But the real soul's suffering are those of the hostages. And they want to ask everyone in the world, 
all the screamers, the indifferent, the experts, the academics, the knowledgeable, the passives, the perfectly outraged, the righteous, the indignant, the haters, the leaders, the lovers, the every single one of us. Why? Why is the world accepting that 240 human beings from almost 30 countries have been stolen and buried alive? These children of God <coughs> range in age from nine months to 87 years. They are Christians, Muslims, Jews, Buddhists, and Hindu. Why are they being left underground in the dirt? Abigail Moore Idan is three years old. She watched her parents get murdered in front of her and was then kidnapped. And she would like me to ask the world, why are you letting her stay in the dark in her trauma buried in the earth's crust? And Joshua Molel, who is a Tanzanian African graduate student studying agribusiness, would like for me to ask you why somehow his life actually doesn't matter. The world must prepare what we will say to them. There was a Christian German who hid Jews during the Holocaust, and he was asked why he did such a heroic and dangerous act. His answer was simple. At least I will know when I die and stand before God, he will not ask me what he asked Cain in the Bible. Where were you when your brother's blood cried out from the ground? What the world needs to start thinking about today is, what will your excuse be? Bring them home now. 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 Please welcome the co chairs of the bipartisan Congressional Caucus to combat anti Semitism Senator Jackie Rosen, Senator James Lankford. Representative Chris Smith and Representative Kathy Manning. Please join us now as we recite a prayer for the hostages. God of mercy and compassion, we pray, we plead, that you bless, protect, and guard those of your people, Israel, and of your people from all faiths and all nations, mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, soldiers, civilians, adults, youth, and babies, the captured and the missing, who have been cruelly and heartlessly torn from their homes and carried off. May God have compassion on them and bring them out from darkness in the shadow of death. May God break their bonds, deliver them from their distress, and bring them swiftly back to their families' embrace. As we read in the words of the prophet Jeremiah, Restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work will be rewarded, declares the Lord. They will return from the land of the enemy. And so we pray before you, O God of redemption, fulfill speedily the words of Genesis. Quote, Here I am with you. I will watch over you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. Indeed, I will not leave you until I have done what I have said to you. 
May the Holy One do all that must be done so that relief, rescue, and long life may be the lot of every one of the civilians and the soldiers who have been taken captive. We pray in the words of the 130th Psalm, Shir Hama'alot Mima'akim Karaticha Adonai. Out of the depths have we called you, O Lord. O Lord, hear our voices. Be attentive to our supplications, and let us say together, Amen. Amen. stage, the Maccabees. Because I think that they're voting when we get a vote for the We ask that everyone please join us in singing this prayer for our brothers and sisters in Israel, Athenu Kol Beit Israel. Let's have our voices be heard. Don't say 
Ambassador to the United States, Michael Herzog. My friends, my brothers and sisters, the Jewish state is under attack and the Jewish people are under attack. On October 7th, I received a call from a senior IDF general who shouted, Israel is at war, we are at war. Since then, our lives have changed. Thousands of Hamas terrorists infiltrated dozens of Israeli communities and tortured, murdered, and kidnapped every civilian they could find. They not only committed unimaginable atrocities, they documented and celebrated them. Let me be clear, we did not start this war, but we must finish it. We must finish the war to ensure that the Hamas murder machine is Gaza, in Gaza is dismantled for good. We must finish the war to send a loud and clear message to Hamas's evil sponsors in Iran and Iranian proxies. Israel will never tolerate any attack on our soil. And we must finish this war to return the hostages to you and to the families, I say, we will leave no stone unturned until we bring them back home. Bring them back home. No other choice for a nation that values life. Thankfully, we are not alone. The majority of Americans stand firmly with Israel. Thank you to President Biden and his administration for your steadfast support. Thank you to the numerous members of Congress from both sides of the aisle. Some of them are here for raising your voices in support of Israel. We will not forget your backing during these dark days. And now, let me say to all of you, the hundreds of thousands of people gathered here today, you are incredible. You give us strength. Now is the time to raise your voice. We are witnessing mass rallies around the globe and also here in the US, vilifying Israel, glorifying Hamas, and celebrating the murder of Jews. We are witnessing Jewish students assaulted and silenced on college campuses. We are witnessing We are witnessing Jewish demonstrators attacked and in some cases killed. The dark demons of anti-Semitism have been unleashed. The choice between good and evil has never been clearer. Do you stand with a terror organization that kills women, children, and the elderly in cold blood? Or do you stand with a democracy that does... Do you 
to stand with the democracy that does everything in its power to protect civilian life on both sides. My friends, there are defining moments in history and this is one of them. At this moment, no one, no one can remain silent. We must raise our voices in support of the one and only Jewish state. Raise our voices against those who oppose Israel's right to defend itself. Raise our voices when we see Jew hatred being spewed unchecked. Raise our voices loud to denounce Hamad for what it is, the barbaric ISIS-like terror organization. Raise our voices loud to bring all the hostages back home. voices loud for those who no longer have a voice. My friends and my brothers and sisters, we are a grieving nation, yet we are united and determined. And together with you, through our shared voices, values, and strength, together, together, we will defeat evil and we will prevail. Israel Chai. Please welcome Pastor John Hagee, Dillard University President Dr. Rochelle Ford, and Anila Ali. As we gather here today, in Israel's darkest hour since the Holocaust, the Jewish people once again search the globe for friends. I am here to deliver a singular message. Israel, you are not alone. I want you to shout that loud enough for them to hear it in Jerusalem. Ready? Jerusalem, Israel, you are not alone. 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 While the Jewish state faces the greatest danger since her rebirth 75 years ago, we pray for the people of Israel and the leaders of Israel. May God give you the wisdom of Solomon and the courage of King David and the victories of Joshua. You, the leaders of Israel, and you alone should determine how this war is going to be conducted and concluded. You decide, no one else. Israel has shown the world that it overcame the tragedy of the Holocaust through the power of hope. Israel has demonstrated the courage to make peace with its neighbors. Israel has always proved that it has the strength to wage war against its enemies. From the five Arab armies that tried to destroy the newly reborn state in 1948, to Hamas and Hezbollah, Iran's proxy armies, to my Jewish brothers and sisters, it is tempting to look at the present darkness and think that nothing has changed. However, things have changed. More than 40 years ago, I joined forces with an Orthodox rabbi, Rabbi Scheinberg, 
to bring Christians and Jews together in mutual love and respect. We stood shoulder to shoulder and we made this declaration. If a line has to be drawn, then draw that line around both Christians and Jews. We are one. We are one. We are one. Today we extend that line around everyone who is gathered here. We must all stand united with one voice and boldly declare over and over, Israel, you are not alone. After the October 7th massacre, we must all make choices. We either choose to love life or we choose death. We choose peace or terror. We choose Israel or Hamas. There is no middle ground in this conflict. You're either for the Jewish people or you're not. Look at history. From Pharaoh to Haman to Hitler, all of these anti-Semitic cowards are remembered only for their failed attempt to destroy God's chosen people. And Hamas is going to suffer the same fate. To Israel's enemies, making threats against Israel is nothing more than a self-fulfilling prophecy about yourself. When you speak of Israel passing away with a sudden storm, you're only speaking of your own demise. Where are the nations that have persecuted the Jewish people? They are historic footnotes in the boneyard of human history. Where is Israel and the Jewish people? The dis despite the efforts of Iran, Hamas, and Hezbollah to destroy the Jewish nation, Israel lives, Israel lives, Israel lives. Israel may be shaken, but she is not shattered. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob guarantees Israel's deliverance will come, as proclaimed every year during Passover. It says in every generation they rise against Israel to destroy it. And the Holy One, blessed be He, saves Israel from their hands. The Bible says, He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. To those who seek to justify the slaughter of Israelis by demon demonizing the Jewish state, Israel is not merely a state. When millions of Zionists mention Israel, they don't just mean the only freedom-loving democracy. Israel is this and more. Israel is the apple of God's eye. Israel is the shining city on the hill. Israel says, God says of Israel, Israel is my firstborn son. Je Jerusalem is the city of God. Jerusalem is the shoreline of eternity. Jerusalem is the eternal capital of Israel today and forever. There is only one nation whose flag will fly over the ancient walls of the sacred city of Jerusalem. That nation is Israel now and forever. of other Christians 
were not here during the Holocaust, but we are here now. And we stand shoulder to shoulder with the Jewish people. We stand until those 240 hostages are returned to their homes. For where there is unity, God Almighty will command his blessings. When America was attacked in World War II, victory was our only aim. And Israel should be afforded that same opportunity. For history has shown that without victory, there is no survival. Victory has, Israel has victory, and that victory will come when all of the hostages are safely home. Israel's victory comes when the terror tunnels have been destroyed. Is, Israel's victory will come when Hamas and Hezbollah are in the ash heap of history along with Haman and Hitler. no substitute for victory. May God bless Israel. May God bless the United States of America. May God bless the Jewish people. And may God bless all who have gathered here today until we overcome the tyranny of the Middle East. Israel, you are not alone today, tomorrow, and forever. God bless the Jewish state. God's timing is always perfect. For about six months, Rabbi Ari Berman, Yeshiva's president, and I have been trying to meet regarding partnerships with Dillard University's revived National Center for Black Jewish Relations. It's running late. We finally connected on October 11th when Rabbi Berman had just returned from Israel. His heart was heavy and I said to him, the Bible says that the Jewish people won when Moses held his arms up. But who was holding Moses' arms? It was Aaron and her. Let us be your Aaron and her. Lean on us. At the same time, we must know that winning today will only happen when there is peace in the Middle East. And when there is an end to anti-Semitism and hate everywhere. Therefore, I ask you to join me in pausing to acknowledge that have been too many innocent people in Gaza, in Israel, who have died. And I pray for peace and safety for all human beings who are in harm's way. You, my brothers and sisters, are not alone. Together, President Berman and I co-wrote a statement that more than a hundred other college and university presidents and chancellors signed condemning the terrorism and calling upon all to act with more clarity in seeking truth and to stand with Israel and to stand with the Palestinians who suffer under Hamas's cruel rule in Gaza. The people of Israel this. We must stand 
with all people of moral conscience. We must seek understanding. We are committed to helping our students to find truth and understanding in this complex world. No one should be condemned or threatened for expressing their support or their advocacy for their nationality, their religion, or their ethnicity. Let's move beyond sound bites. Let's work together to promote understanding. We must remember that it was black American troops that helped to liberate the concentration camps during World War II. We must remember that Jewish leaders like Rabbi Abraham Joshua Herschel marched with Dr. Martin Luther King to end segregation and advocate for civil rights. We must promise to keep talking, to keep listening, and to help each other to understand each other better. We must lean into love, be empathetic. Being empathetic is what will help us to move forward. We understand that our families are all scared. We hold fear for those of us with loved ones in the military and those who live in harm's way. We live in fear that the help might not get to the people who need it most. As someone who is black and with indigenous ancestors, I know how important it is to fight the pull of hate that comes from fear. Therefore, we must help each other to fight the easy and the natural urge to give in to blind rage and hate, and help each other to love humanity, to value each other, and respect each other in all cultures, in all people. Let's do this together. We stand with you against anti-Semitism and bringing the hostages home. Shalom. I am Anila Ali. I stand before you as a Muslim American Pakistani, friend of the Jewish people. Inshallah, inshallah. I'm here to affirm to my Abrahamic brothers and sisters that you are not alone. Yes, we are all feeling the hurt, the pain, the fear, but we also stand united in hope that a better future for all of us is possible. Now, my brothers and sisters and young people, in, Jew, in, in the Jewish culture, faith, we call it tikwa. And in Muslim faith, we call it taqwa. You see how close we are? In 1947, my birth country, Pakistan, emerged from a bloody partition of the British India. 14 million people including my family became refugees. One million people were killed, including my family. They were the founding fathers and mothers of Pakistan. But they told us, they looked at the next generation and they said, let's move on. 
and we did. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, we integrated refugees, we accepted the borders, and we focused on, a, on building a better future for all our generations. And in that spirit, I declare, the war to destroy the Jews and the Jewish homeland must end once and for all. The Holy Quran repeatedly expresses reverence for the Torah and praises the Jews, Jewish people. There is a chapter in the Quran, it's called Bani Israel, Bene Israel, insists that the children of Israel will be gathered from, is, from exile back into their homeland. And let me tell you, Islamic law explicitly forbids attacking civilians, kidnapping babies, grandmothers. All of this violates the core of our religion. And hiding behind civilians is both evil and cowardly. And teaching our children, our youth on campuses to hate, hate Jews is unforgivable. I have been to Israel three times. And I have seen for myself how Muslims can gain by making peace with Israel. Partnering with the Jewish people and focusing on a future together. Let's look at United Arab Emirates. Brothers and sisters and young people, we are taking another delegation of Muslim American women leaders to Israel. Yes, and we will meet with Israelis and Muslims who, whose loved ones have been murdered on October 7th. And those Muslims who risked their lives to save dozens of Jews on that day. Let me tell all of you, Muslims are, and Jews are not destined to be enemies. We are stronger together. We are blessed together. We, all of us, are the connected children of Ibrahim. Peace be upon him. And now, today, we are called upon to fulfill that historic destiny together. I know this is a dark time, but this is also a historic moment. We will emerge stronger, more united than ever before, and together we will forge a lasting peace. Inshallah. these young Muslim, uh, Jewish students are proclaiming, I proclaim with you, Am Israel Chai. Kids were running in every direction. Nobody knew which way was the way to safety. They're our seniors. They're our infants. They're just like any college kid in any city in America, with hopes, dreams, a future. This is a time. Michael Rappaport. <laughs> What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody in the back? Everybody in the back, everybody in the front, all you beautiful Jewish people, all you beautiful people from Israel. 38 days ago, Israel was attacked. We know what happened. The hostages must come home. Free every single one of them. 
There cannot be a cease fire until the hostages are home. I have never felt this prideful to be Jewish in my life. It's been a crazy time, but Jewish people around the world, we have seen it all. We have heard it all. Israel is not going anywhere. Jewish people are not going anywhere. I encourage everybody to continue to support each and every one of us. And to the people that aren't with us, you're gonna thank us later. All you young people in the front, you are beautiful. You're beautiful. Stay strong, all right? Stay safe, stay sane, and make sure you stay disruptive. I'm bringing up two beautiful young students who have been dealing with all the bullshit on campuses in this country. The shocking anti-Semitism, the anti-Jewishness that's taking place here on the college universities. Everybody make sure to pray, to send love to all the hostages, to all the families that are from all around the world. Make sure you don't forget them. I've talked to some of them here today. I'm bringing up Sabrina Sofer from the George Washington University. And Noah Faye from Columbia University. Listen to what they have to say and I appreciate you guys, thank you. Shalom lekulam. Hello everyone. You will now hear the voices of students. And I want to open with one message that has helped me through these tough times. If you want to save the world, go home and love your family. We are here at the heart of our American home, united as one family. Am Israel, arm in arm with the American people. From family, we acquire life-guiding principles. My family's history traces generations of Torah scribes dedicated to preserving Jewish heritage. From Egypt to southern Russia, Dagestan, once my grandparents' homes, Zionism and Israel afforded protection and prosperity. October 7th confirms that cancerous Jew hatred festers on our streets and institutions. At my George Washington University, we've seen anti-Semitic hate fests, rallies supporting murders of Israelis, unconscionable insults projected onto our library. Our Hillel building broken into, our kidnapped posters torn from the inside. Threats of violence. Our hearts remain shattered by that dark Saturday and the hate we see today. But our spirit is unbroken. Our obstacles are opportunities for the righteous and audacious. Professors who condemn Hamas, administrators striving to guarantee Jewish safety. When we hear genocidal chants, my GW peers and I, from organizations like Chabad GW, GW for Israel, and GW Hillel, In the words of Rabbi Levi Shem Tov, we fight anti-Semitism with strong and informed Semitism. 
come with vibrancy, resilience is what marks our legacy. No one, no one in this crowd, no student, no person stands alone. Nothing, 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 nothing at all can splinter the Jewish soul. The Jewish soul, the American resolve, allied together, shall never surrender values of civilization, democracy, and humanity. All of Israel are responsible for one another. We fought for it. We died for it. As Prime Minister Begin once proclaimed, we will forever stand by Israel. We face an arduous battle, but we shall not tremble in fear. Our stars of David will shine on our chests and in our hearts. My beloved family, this generation is ready to lead, to fight with steadfast confidence and unconquerable moral courage. The people of Israel live now and forever. Netzach Israel lo yishakel. The promise of Israel will endure. Am Israel chai. Am Israel chai lenatzeach. Toda rava. Columbia University. On my campus, over 100 professors have openly advocated for Israel's destruction, justifying the murders of our Jewish sisters and brothers and defending their murderers. I have said this before and I will say it again. I am a black Native American Jewish woman and I will not be silenced! No matter how many anti-Israel demonstrations I must walk past on my way to class, no matter how many of my professors support the students defending Hamas, no matter how many times we are told to cower in fear, I will continue to shout! We should not have to do this, but we can do this. We must do this, and I will tell you why. Until October 7th, I think my classmates and I had forgotten not only why we love Israel, but why we need Israel. As individuals, we may have many homes. As Jews, we have but one. We have a long journey ahead of us, I know. And I know that many of my peers, faced with so much hatred and anti-Semitism on campus, are feeling helpless and hopeless. But to them I say, look around you. We are the Jews of the diaspora. This is how we fight. We fight loudly and we fight peacefully. We are far from helpless. We are far from hopeless. At Columbia and elsewhere, our administrators are beginning to stand with us. And here in our nation's capital, America stands with us. We are not alone. 
Council, founder of Zionism, wrote, whole branches of Judaism may wither and fall, but the trunk remains. We lost a beautiful branch on October 7th, we did. But as I look in front of me now, I see a very sturdy trunk. And it is from this trunk that I know more branches will grow should we will it. Todagaba. Please welcome the President and CEO of the Jewish Federations of North America, Eric Fingerhut, and the CEO of the Conference of Presidents, William Daroff. On behalf of the leadership and the 50 member organizations of the Conference of Presidents of major American Jewish organizations, I thank you for coming today to this historic March for Israel. And on behalf of the leadership of the 146 Jewish federations across North America, I thank you for your resolve and your determination to show up today on the National Mall, America's front yard, to exercise our democratic rights. We have indeed made history today with over 290,000 of us gathered here on the National Mall. This is the largest pro-Israel gathering in history. There are also 250,000 watching on live stream and C-SPAN right now. And there are also 900 participants from the Detroit Federation who arrived at the Dulles airport a few hours ago, whose bus drivers refused to take them to a pro-Israel event. Look what we can do in just over a week. Imagine what we can do. Today's crowd brings together every sector of American life people of all faiths and creed, of all races and background, to say together with unity and strength, we support Israel's fight to rid itself of the terror threat and restore safety and security to its people. We demand the immediate and unconditional release of the hostages held in captivity in Gaza. Bring them home. Bring them home. Bring them home, and we will not allow the haters and the anti-Semites to intimidate us. We are America, and America is us. We thank and appreciate the bipartisan support of Israel from the President of the United States, Joe Biden, and the United States Congress, as reflected here today. We want them to know that support for Israel in America is overwhelming and bipartisan and transcends geography and ideology. Americans support Israel and understand why it must be victorious in its war against the Hamas terrorist army. And America's leaders must continue to reflect the will of the American people. And today's historic crowd also brings together every segment of the diverse Jewish community in this great country. We stand here together on the National Mall proudly to declare our unity in face of the most dangerous threat to the Jewish people since the Holocaust, the need to defeat the murderous, barbarous Hamas army that has already tortured and murdered thousands of Jews and will continue on this path if not stopped. As we face our, this challenge, our core values of Torah, our heritage, tefillah, our prayerful quest, and tzedakah, acts of goodness and kindness, guide us forward with a unique strength. 
Of course, our work does not stop here today. We must continue to march in our communities and in every forum we have available to us. Contact your members of Congress and urge them to support the supplemental package of aid to Israel. Contact your alma mater and demand that they act against the anti-Semitism on campus and defend the rights of Jewish students to go to school free of intimidation and harassment. Keep the hostages in the forefront of our thoughts and actions, in our conversations and on our social media and in our prayers. Bring them home. 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 And support and advocate for Israel in your communities, your businesses, your schools, and your neighborhoods. Support for Israel in the capital begins with support for Israel back home. This will be a long fight. In the words of the psalm, we must neither slumber nor sleep. As we leave the National Mall today, we do so with gratitude for all the Americans of all faiths and walks of life who have joined us in this march. You know that Israel's fight against Hamas is no different than America's fight against ISIS or Al-Qaeda. And victory must be fought in the same manner. And as we leave this National Mall today, we do so with gratitude to all who helped make today possible, and especially to the law enforcement agencies who made our visit to the nation's capital a priority. with the love of America deep in our souls. Let our faith in God, our love of country, and our love of all the people of Israel guide us today and always. Baruch atah b'voecha, Baruch atah b'tzeitecha. Blessed were you in coming. Blessed may you be in your travels home. And now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again, Omer Ano. show the world how strong we are. I've never seen our country and the Jewish people around the world unite together like now. We need to keep speaking up. We need to keep posting. We need to keep getting together and keep showing the world how strong we are. Because each and every one of you makes the difference. So Be'ezrat Hashem, we will return all the hostages and all the chayalim safe sounds back home and it will never happen again so let's pray all of us together with Modani Is 
מסתותיי, לדאוג לאוהביי, נתת לי חיי. על יום המנוחה, על שפע וברכה, על המשפחה, כל כולי רק בזכותך. אז דע לך, דע לך, שמודה אני לך. בוא נשמע אתכם. שירו איתנו. כבוד עם ישראל. הלב שלי נקרע לשניים, מה שלא ראתה שפחה למים, כמו סופה מן הים עולם, כמו טרפה של מרים פעם, ואין תרופה בעולם. שלי מרים ידיים, כבר מועד לא עומד על הרגליים. שבר כלי שם בו, כבר מה, השמיים הם לי חומה. חבו בתוך הים, ביבשה, כולם חזק. ורק אתה יכול להפוך מספדי למחול, לזכך את החול. 
המעמד הקדוש והיקר הזה, אני רוצה להזמין יהודי יקר שהוא ורבים וטובים כמוהו עשו עבודת קודש והוא הגיע במיוחד לארץ ישראל ואני רוצה שתעשו לו הרבה הרבה כפיים למסירות נפש של האנשים האלה הצדיקים, עובדי זק"א הקדושים עכשיו, בנוכחות האנשים האלה שהם ודאי וודאי מליצי יושר אצל הקדוש ברוך הוא שעשו דברים שרק הם קיבלו תפקיד לעשות 
שבעזרת השם, השם יתמלא רחמים על עם ישראל ויביא לנו כבר גאולה ויבדה לנו את השבויים ואת החטופים שיחזרו כבר וישמור על כל החיילים שלנו אז ביחד נקדש שם שמיים עכשיו ביחד ונגיד שמע ישראל אדוני אלוהינו אדוני אחד השם ישמור אתכם. ניפגש בירושלים!
Please, please sing along with us as loud as you possibly can. We want to hear each and every one of you. I'm Israel. Oh, <laughs> 
for attending today's rally. Please make your way to the nearest exit and get home safely. Six, five, six hundred images of digital. Then the second time I went to Israel, I brought 20 rolls of film. Barely got through one roll, shot like 1,500 images on digital. So one of these days, I guess I'll have to learn how to work these, so these mirrorless. This is DLSR, right? Uh, it's, it's a digital, yeah. It's, 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 DLSR. A, it's an old camera. It's a T T1i. I heard that the DLSRs are still better for photos. If you do mostly photos, as opposed to what, video? Video, I mostly do video. Yeah, I have to learn how to do all that, but if the gimbal is kind of nice. It helps for, it helps for uh, when you're walking Crowds. around like this. Yeah, it really helps get smooth shots. I like handheld better though. I like handheld better. It's but not, it, The problem is you're never steady enough. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's only steady. If you use a monopod, which you got a monopod. Oh, this right? isn't a monopod. Oh, that's your walking stick. stick. I would have liked to have used a monopod, but um, they don't always allow monopod. That's true. You guys want me to take a picture with you in it? Take a picture. You guys want me to take a picture with yes, you? Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's awesome. Guys, get in. Go to the sides. Go to the sides. Go to Count us off. One, two, three, top gun. You got the capital in the background? Get I don't do it a little higher this time. One. Hold on, hold on. Two, one. One, one, two, three, top gun. Capital! Woo! 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 Woo!
Thank you so much. Much appreciated. No, so the reason I bought it is because hmm? Taylor wanted a tiny one, and I got a huge discount. 
Take care. All right. I appreciate it. Yeah. I take the green belt. Now when the lights are flashing, that's when the train's coming. Sounds good. Yeah. Oh, read about the rider. Yeah. Oh, my hands on the sweaty. Sorry. Yeah. You take care. Yeah. You too. You'll be all right. Name job good. Man. I'll look you up on Facebook. Silver Spring Arrow. I don't know if it's advantageous to be towards the front or the back, so you'll have to just sort of wing it. All right. Take, take care. care. Thank you. 